My grandmother had always been very ill towards me. She never liked me. When I discovered why she never liked me, I guess it kind of made sense. Well, one day, I guess you could say I got the golden ticket, because I won a lottery drawing. And then all of a sudden, she wants to act nice to me. Well, guess what, Grandma? It's too late to act nice. Growing up, I used to believe that all families who lived together in the same house were happy. Especially if it were an extended family, but as I grew older, I figured that the only time that was certain to happen would be in the movies. For me, it wasn't possible, and no matter how hard I tried to understand it, my grandmother never really liked me. At one point, I believed it's because my mother bore me out of wedlock. And whenever my grandmother saw me, it made her so mad. As a child, I lived with my mother, grandparents, and my mother's sister who moved out later. But sadly, my grandfather passed away when I was five. And my mother's younger sister got married and moved out of the house. So, it was just me, mom, and grandma. As a single parent, life was really tough for my mother because she had to take care of me alone. She did odd jobs, worked almost 70 hours a week, just to make sure I went to a good school. And so she could take care of other bills, like rent, food, and everything else. According to my mother, she had always been the black sheep of the family. She and Grandma never really got along, and she was a little bit stubborn, but when she gave birth to me, at the age of 17, everything fell apart between her and my grandmother. Her late father, my granddad, was more forgiving and accommodating. At least, I had been with him a couple years before he passed away. And I remembered the way he took care of me and treated me like he, well, I was his own. While my grandma, on the other, wanted nothing to do with me. The only reason I got to grow up in that house was that my late granddad did not let her throw me out on the street with my mother when I was a baby. Somehow, my mom was my granddad's favorite child, and my aunt Emma was my grandmother's. But this did not last for long. After grandfather passed, my grandma gave us a condition. If we wanted to keep living under her roof, then we would have to pay rent, buy and cook our own food, and live like we were all strangers to each other. It was a pretty harsh rule, and on my mother, but... She had to live with it because she could not afford to pay for another home. And with my father being absent from our lives, she believed growing up in my grandmom's house would cover up my father's absence, but it didn't. It was a very bad decision for my mental health. As every other child would, I grew up asking my mother questions about my father and why my grandma hated me so much. I never really understood why a mother would hate her child and grandchild so much until today. I don't really understand why. My emotional roller coaster began when my mom's sister, Aunt Emma, gave birth to her first daughter, Maya. Did I say that Aunt Emma was my grandma's golden child? She was my mother's young sister who turned out to be a successful medical doctor. And she obviously was my grandmother's favorite daughter. I guess my grandma loved her because she turned out to be successful in her own way. Showered my grandma with gifts and gave her money too. She was even married to a middle class man. While mom was just a high school dropout. Did odd jobs like frying at Kentucky Chicken. Washing toilets, cooking restaurants, or just doing anything that could fetch her just enough money to pay the rent. Else, my grandma would lock up our rooms and threaten to kick us out. It was at that time Aunt Emma moved in with us for a couple weeks that I realized how much my grandma hated me. I saw as she took care of my little cousins, fed her, bathed her, and even changed her diapers. Meanwhile, my mother told me my grandma refused to touch me when I was a baby. Even if she didn't tell me, I would have still figured it out from the expression of disgust on her face whenever she looked at me. I know this is really difficult to say, but she loved our dog more than she loved me. I wasn't allowed to eat her food or even go close to her room. 
All I knew was that she was my mom's mother, but we lived in the same house, like arch enemies. When I was nine, she forced us to move into the old garage. She had somebody rebuild a couple things in the garage, and my mom and I moved in there. The funny thing was, the wall between the old garage and her living room was so thin that I could literally hear her laughing with my cousin from the other side of the wall. I know that you might probably be wondering why we still lived with her anyways. It's because my mom kept on believing that one day her mother would come to us and tell us that she's forgiven her for getting pregnant out of wedlock and for keeping me. But that day never came. At least until we moved out. When Aunt Emma gave birth to her second daughter, something happened that I still find difficult to get it out of my head. I don't know how, but Angel, my little baby cousin, was crying so loud and I was in the garage. Well, when she didn't stop crying and I didn't hear any movement in the house, I went into my grandma's apartment to make Angel stop crying. Some minutes after I entered, Maya, Angel's older sister, stepped into the living room and when she saw me, she yelled at the top of her voice and my grandma came rushing in. Snatched Angel out of my hands and pushed me out of her home. In her words, she said, and I quote, I never want to see you inside my house and never touch any of my grandkids with your filthy hands. I returned to our room with my eyes filled with tears, and when my mother returned, I told her everything that happened. My grandma had succeeded in turning my cousins against my mother and me. When Angel grew older, she and her sister Maya would laugh at the sight of me. They would say demeaning words out loud and even point fingers at me. But mom taught me to ignore all that. With time, I got used to all their crappy attitudes. So I didn't really care about why my grandma thought of me anymore. Mom tried her best in raising me because my father never showed up. When I was off the right age and my questions about my father did not seem like it was ever going to end, my mom told me my father was not interested in me and he had gotten two other women pregnant around the same time she got pregnant. So the chances of him taking responsibility of me were slim to none. I understood what my mother had gone through right from the moment she realized she was pregnant. She was so scared and she tried to confide in her sister. Aunt Emma, but... Aunt Emma betrayed her trust and ratted her out to their parent. My grandfather was disappointed, but he embraced her and respected her choice of keeping me. But her grandmother wanted nothing to do with her and me. To make up for everything, I promised my mom I would study hard, stay away from the boys, and focus more on my future, so that in the end I'd make her proud. It was my only way of making up every terrible thing she passed through at the hands of her mother and sister. I completed high school at the age of 15, but I couldn't move on with college because of the one answer, money. Mom was greatly in debt, so there was no way she was going to raise money for that. I didn't want to take the student loan too, and I had seen how owning so much debt had affected my mother and I. So I decided I was not going to start my life with a huge amount of debt hanging around my neck. It wasn't like we had any other family member that we could reach out to for help. That's why I decided I was going to drop the idea of college for a while and find a job. It wasn't really what I wanted, but I had to do it. My grandmom, on the other hand, did not care one bit about my welfare. To her, my mom and I didn't even exist. So, she focused more on my cousin and Aunt Emma. Whenever they came in for holidays, my cousins would deliberately stay up in the living room, laughing, playing games at night. When they weren't laughing and playing games, they intentionally would be watching movies at the loudest volume, despite knowing that it made us so uncomfortable and we could not complain about it. If we tried to complain about it, my grandma would instruct my cousins to turn up the volume in our presence. Personally, I had enough and I could not hold it in any longer. It took my mom over 15 years to know that her mother was never going to accept her or forgive her. Aunt Emma did not seem to have a problem with the way her mother treated us. 
My mom said that they did not have a great relationship as sisters, too. It was either my grandmother was always on her side or my grandfather was always supporting my mom. So it caused her rift between the both of them. Aunt Emma would occasionally tell her little princess to be nice to me, but would follow it with a loud laugh, and her daughters would join her too. It was all just a mockery. If for any reason any of my cousin's birthdays were celebrated at my grandmother's house, all of her friends, neighbors, and the kids would be invited, and I would not get to go. I never really had my birthday own party. It was always me and my mom with a couple of cupcakes on a plate. I eventually found a job and made a few friends at my new workplace. That's where I met Casey. Casey was two years older than me, but she became my best friend. Unlike me, Casey was emotionally stronger. She didn't let words get to her, and if she said she was going to kick your butt, she was definitely going to kick your butt. I enjoyed being around Casey. Even my mother loved her. Aside from being very intelligent and strong-witted, Casey had no interest in going to school. So whenever I told her how much I wanted to go to college but I could not afford it, she would casually tell me to buy lottery tickets, and I would just laugh. It did not really make sense to me until my mother and I were talking about Casey one day, and I casually mentioned it. When I did, she said there was no harm in getting a couple lottery tickets, and if Casey thought it could work, then she was probably right, right? So, when I got to work the next day, I talked to Casey and she promised to go with me to get lottery tickets after work. I ended up buying a lot of tickets, because according to Casey, the more tickets I bought, the higher my chances were. To be honest, I spent little money I was able to save just to get those darn tickets. Being someone who didn't really believe in winning the lottery, I did not put too much hope into it. I just didn't want to be the girl who neglected my friend's advice because I thought it was stupid. And besides, as my mother said, there's no harm in giving it a shot. Besides, trying to save money for college, we needed to move out of my grandmother's old garage. There was no happy memories in there for us. I don't know how it happened, but I won. I was taking the day off from work when Casey called me and woke me up. She sounded very excited and told me to check my last ticket number. Before this, we had checked the rest, but I didn't win any of them, and it was just two tickets left with me. I had given up on them to the extent that I almost tossed them into the garbage bin, because I thought it was just stupid of me to believe I, out of all the people in the world, could win a lottery, and all my problems would just, poof, vanish. Well, it happened, and let me tell you, it was a sheer dumb luck. I screamed at the top of my voice when I found out I won a crazy amount of money that would not only take care of college, but would give us the opportunity to move into a better apartment and afford to pay five years down payment or even buy a home. At that point, I called my mom and broke the news to her. It was too good to be true that she cried on the phone. We eventually got the money, rented a new apartment, moved out of the house, and notified my grandma that we were leaving. At first, it sounded like a joke to her because she asked, and I quote, Where are you two going? Where are you going to move to when you don't even have any money? Well, it wasn't her showing concern, it was her mocking us. For the first time, my mother spoke back to her in an angry tone. She told her, hey, guess what? We just won the lottery and we're going to use part of the money to buy a home. We weren't. We didn't even decide that yet, but mom said it just to make her mad. The very first thing we did with the money was settling all the debts that mom owed. We put some aside for my college education and whatever was left will be used to take care of our new apartment and some other things. She just scoffed at us and continued to crochet. But when she realized we were not joking, she asked if we were being serious with an expression of confusion written across her face. 
Mother nodded with tears streaming down her eyes and dropped her keys on the table. As we were about to walk out of her apartment, which I have not entered in years, she called my mother by her name. And when we turned in her direction, she said, and I quote, What about our share of the money? Then mom broke into a wild laughter, and we walked out of her house forever. As of that moment, I believe that winning the lottery was God's way of saying he did not give up on us, and it be an end to our financial problem. Oh boy, but I was wrong. It was all the beginning of a head of new problems between grandmother and us. What's up everybody, Mr. Redito here. So today's story is a wild ride. I can only imagine how many people out there, including me, who have dreamt about winning the lottery. Well, OP sure is lucky. The amount that won was not disclosed, but it seems like enough to at least buy a new house and pay off the debt. However, the grandmother does not seem ready to let this slide. I hope you guys are enjoying the story so far. Make sure you subscribe for daily videos. It really helps support me, and I deeply appreciate that. And let's jump into update number one. Hey guys. Um, after that incident at my grandma's house, she began to call us. At first, we thought it was a joke, but it wasn't. She began to send messages saying that she wanted her own share of the lottery winnings. Her calls would come in every day. If she could not reach my mother, she would call me. It was very funny because the longest thing or text message my grandma had said to me in years was, and I quote, Okay, fine. If you're not going to give me the share of the lottery winnings, how about your cousins? Well, reading that made me go absolutely ballistic. It never occurred to her that I was her granddaughter too until we moved out of her house. And, of course, told her about the lottery winnings, that she had never even referred to Maya and Angel as my cousins. Instead, she made me a laughingstock in front of the family. I could not still forget how she did not waste time treating me as an outcast whenever she got the opportunity to do it. The same girl she was referring to as my cousin humiliated me several times in her presence. She brainwashed them to speak ill of my mother. And whenever they looked at us, the disgust on their face looked like they've seen leper. If I were told that my grandmother would act the way because of money, then I would not have believed it. When she realized that we were not going to respond to any of her messages, she began to send abusive messages, calling my mother and me a disappointment and a mistake. Over the years of living at my grandma's house, my mom and I were used to her abusing us and calling us all sorts of names. So everything she said didn't really get to us anymore, especially after we were now able to have a peaceful sleep without loud TV sounds blaring over our heads and all that. One of those evenings, my mom and I were trying to make dinner at our new apartment when we heard the doorbell ring. To our great surprise, it was Aunt Emma. She was certainly the last person we were expecting to show up at her home. Not after all those years of her acting like there was nothing wrong with the way my grandmother treated us. Of course, Mom did not let her pass through the door. She told her to say whatever she had to say and get away from the front door. As if we have not gotten enough surprises... Aunt Emma pulled the emotional card with my mother, reminding her that they were in fact sisters, and if for not any reason, my mother and I should share the lottery winnings with them because it's something my late grandfather would want to do for the family. She said decided to come to us before my grandmother tried calling us several times, and when she could not reach us, she sent Aunt Emma. Update number two, a day later. Hearing my grandmother was going to send Aunt Emma, well, it made me burst into a loud laugh. It was the most hilarious thing that we've heard the whole year. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> what did you say? My mom asked again just to be sure she was not losing her mind, and with a sense of pride, Aunt Emma repeated the same words, but she didn't expect the slap that followed. 
My mother was so angry that her hands left lines on Aunt Emma's cheek. I wasn't expecting Aunt Emma to fight back, and she didn't. It was very foolish of her to think that using such lines on my mother would manipulate her and make her feel bad. My mother asked Aunt Emma to go back and tell my grandma that my late grandfather would not expect her to be that foolish, and he would certainly not want my grandmother, Aunt Emma, and my rude cousins. Oh, well, don't reap what they didn't show. And even if it snowed during summer, neither Aunt Emma, my grandmother, nor any of my cousins were going to receive a penny for the lottery winnings, even if pigs fly. Well, with these words, Aunt Emma left ashamed. There was no other explanation for what she did than greed. She was a doctor, was earning quite well. We never had a good relationship, and she never cared about any of us. So, she had no right to demand part of the lottery winnings for either her mother or her daughters. After Aunt Emma showed up at our apartment, it did not end there. My grandmother continued to send threatening messages. The one that really stood out was when she said she would disown my mom and I too if we did not share the lottery winnings with my cousins. And that was the only message my mom responded to. Oh boy. My mother responded by telling her that she did not have to disown us because we were not even her family in the first place. She never treated us as her own. So saying she's going to disown us now is not a very strong word to use. I must admit that those were one of the most difficult moments for my mother though. It always had a way of reminding her of the kind of family she was born into. On those days, she'd wished her father was still alive to at least help her pass through that phase. We both believed that winning the lottery and moving out of my grandmother's house would be the beginning of a peaceful life, but it seemed like Aunt Emma and my grandmother made a plan to not let us be. They tried everything possible to manipulate and oppress us just to give them a share of the money, but we always adamantly refused. While I lived in my grandmother's house, she seriously never cared if I've eaten, wore clothes donated by charity, had holes in them, or what. She treated me in the worst possible way, yelling at me, and never accepted me as part of her family. So she had no rights to make demands for my money. Update number three, final update posted by OP. Hey guys, my mother and I were home one day when Aunt Emma showed up at our apartment with an order to appear in court. She didn't say a word, she just handed it to my mother and left. It turned out that my mom and I had been sued by grandma for not paying a security fee while we lived in her house. It was unbelievable! I knew my grandma hated us, but not to the extent of suing us in court. My mom and I knew this was way beyond being a joke at this point. We weren't owning my grandmother a penny, nothing we were giving her. In fact, my mom made sure she settled the rent and other bills first before even taking care of things at home. Most times, we ended up running out of cash because if there was any form of lateness in paying the rent, grandmother would either lock up my room or threaten to kick us out. When I told Casey that we had been sued, she gave us the idea to counter sue. So, <laughs> we did. Stating that my mother and I are supposed to pay rent because her father owned the house. On the day of the court hearing, my grandma came in with Aunt Emma. It was our first time seeing one another after we moved out of her old garage. In the beginning, the case started in my grandmother's favor. She even came with photos of the old garage, saying that we had destroyed some of the property. Well, I guess she got me at that point. Luckily for us, it was not part of what she sued us for, so the judge simply did not pay attention to it. The truth is, my grandma had never discussed anything about paying security fees with my mother when she asked her to start paying rent. She only came up with the whole idea when she figured she was never going to get any money from us. When it was our turn, my mother, well, she was able to speak. So, 
She explained to the judge that she was living with her parents when she had me, but after her father passed away, her mother asked her to start paying rent, and they did not once at all have a discussion about the security fee. Well, she also explained to the judge that the reason my grandma was acting that way was because I won the lottery, and she, my grandmother, asked for a share, and when we refused, she starts to threaten us. Then, for our counter suit, my mother claimed she was not supposed to be paying rent because it was equally her father's property, but since she was not my father's favorite child, my mother disappointed her by giving birth to me. And that's how she had to start paying rent after Grandpa passed. The judge asked if my grandfather left a will, but my grandma said she lost it. Actually, she came up with a different excuse and ends up saying, My grandfather willed the house to her and Aunt Emma alone. Fortunately for us, the judge didn't believe her little lie. She told her it was inhumane of her to ask one daughter to pay rent for all those years, while her other daughter, Aunt Emma, could come in with her daughter and spend as much time as she wanted. The judge could obviously see through my grandmother's lies. She understood that she was trying to extort money from us. So the judge canceled my grandma's claims and told her since there was no will, and she did not believe that my grandfather willed the house to just her and Aunt Emma, she passed a judgment for the house to be shared equally between Aunt Emma and my mother. Not just that. The judge also pointed out that my mother and I were not even supposed to be paying rent, since it was her late father's property too, and she had equal right to it. The judge also ordered my grandmother to pay back three years' worth of rent to my mom as compensation, and the case was dismissed. Honestly, between my mother and I, none of us were expecting the case to turn out that way. My grandma and Aunt Emma were definitely not to be expecting of that. Maybe if they knew the case would turn out that way, they would not have sued us in court for a mere $800. In the end, not only did we become shared owners of my late grandfather's house, but we were getting compensation too. My grandmother was so furious that she walked out of the courtroom and yelled at the top of her voice. The moment right there was her worst nightmare. For someone who didn't even want to see us, the last thing she expected was us owning a part of the property too. It was really a great scene to see. We also got a restraining order for Aunt Emma. We were tired of her pretty little face showing up at our apartment unannounced. We didn't move back into the house. It had so much bad memories for mother and me. So instead, we rented out the rooms that were given to us. My mom and my grandma never fixed a relationship. Later on, we realized that it was not just about my mom getting pregnant by mistake. Maybe it was because my late grandfather loved her more than he loved Aunt Emma. As for the money from the lottery, I used it for college and I graduated with a first class in nursing applied to my state hospital, and I got hired. My mom never got married again. She dated a couple times, though. My grandmother ended up passing away some years ago, and Aunt Emma had to deal with her daughters. Maya ended up getting pregnant out of wedlock, and Angel gets out of rehab. Well, for a couple times. When my grandmother passed, Aunt Emma and my mom decided it was better for both of them to sell the house. So they did, but the broken relationship could not be fixed. So my mother and I moved on with our lives. Imagine being the grandmother of this story. All the animosity, all the toxicness that she had came around to backstab her, bite her right in the butt. She thought for sure that the judge would be like, oh yeah, go ahead, have all their money. Oh no, turns out that every single thing the grandmother tried to do backfired. So I want to hear from you guys. If you were in OP's position, how would you go about handling your grandmother? Yeah, your crazy, toxic grandmother that treated you like crap your whole life. Drop your comments down below. Let's talk about it in the comment section. Guys, if you're new to the channel, hello, my name's Mr. Redditoe. 
I post stories every single day. Some really crazy stuff sometimes, some more dramatic, sometimes inheritance stories, Karen stories, you name it. So smash that subscribe button. I will catch you guys tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed. A oh, peace.